fingers crossed. Oh, I only added a little bit of water, by the way. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I specialize in soup. Like, this is a disclaimer. And mind you, it, the batter, it tastes good, you know, it really tasted really good. But look at this. This one is not going well. It is hot as a flicking rock. So that one is a fail. Um, I've added some more um, water, flour, and baking powder. So now we're going to try it the way that I see. Sorry, everybody else would have done it. And ooh, okay, so it's a little bit too runny in my opinion. But it already, the consistency already looks better. Okay guys, I need your help. I need your help because I have clearly done something wrong. Crispy, they ain't rising as much. Up, they taste really good. I hope y'all really, really enjoyed my despair in that other video because I'm telling you, it was rough. So for all of us that suffer, that stress out when it's time to make kung for this, this one for y'all. Hi everyone, I'm Bodine Victoria. Welcome to my kitchen and this is my pot. If you had watched my stories a few months back, I labored. I was so stressed out trying to find the perfect conch fritter batter recipe, one that you can make at home. And when you go to like Fox Hill Day and you go to some of the other fairs, just anywhere that there is an event happening, if you don't have conch fritters on the menu, you ain't serious about life. Conch fritters would be like this juicy little treat that you get on rides around the island or when you're hanging with friends or even at a baby shower. <laughs> a good comforter is hard to find. Personally, I like mine to be a very fluffy consistency on the inside filled with conch filled with seasonings filled with herbs and that's what we're going to do for today. this recipe i have half a cup of tenderized and minced conch it's diced into kind of little cubes i have some tomatoes some sweet pepper and some goat pepper in here because i want these super spicy i also have about a quarter cup of onion and some celery cut up of course you're going to need your salt um, your thyme a little bit of garlic powder if you have onion powder that would be awesome but i don't have onion powder so i added more of the onions you want some baking powder we're going to be using a cup maybe a little bit more of flour and of course you're going to need oil additionally if you are using fresh conch you're going to need water but i want to kind of play with the flavor a little bit so i have a little bit of homemade chicken stock I've not made any seafood stock as yet, so I'm gonna be using homemade chicken stock for the flavor instead of water. All right, now let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to season our flour. So I'm going to be adding half a teaspoon of salt, put in the garlic powder to taste, my fresh thyme, and this is where you taste your batter to see if you like how it tastes. Because from here, you'll have an idea of if you need to add any additional seasonings to it. Taste your flour. Hmm. I'm going to take my onions and sweet peppers. Sorry, my onions and celery. Man, I can just take all the herbs. And I can drop them in here. All of my sweet pepper and my goat pepper. My tomatoes. Some people don't use tomatoes. I use tomatoes because it adds a little bit of juiciness to the um, to the batter. And I'm gonna mix that in as well. It's almost like the veggies are coated in this um, in this flour mixture. We're going to add our half a cup of conch. And guess what? If you want more conch, add more conch. It ain't for me to say how much conch should go in your conch fritter. I just know that I want it to cook evenly and I want it to be conky. Here is where it's gonna get interesting. Now we're going to add a little bit of our chicken broth or our water because we wanna hydrate this a little bit. And I already see that I'm gonna have to add some more water to this, but I'm gonna take this and it's gonna add some more flavor in any event. So even with just that little bit, our batter is now this consistency. So I'm gonna take some water. Where is my water jug? One second. All right, so we're gonna take just a little bit of water and we're gonna add it just like this. 
We're gonna take some more water because what we want to do is we want to get a free moving consistency. And we haven't added our baking powders yet and there's a reason for that. Okay, so now we have a bit of a lighter consistency. So I'm gonna switch up the camera angle and then I'm gonna add the baking powder. I'm adding the baking powder now because I didn't wanna overwork it inside the batter. And I also wanted to kind of give you an idea of what the batter looks like in its resting state and what it looks like as it rises. This is what our comfort batter looks like before we put the leavening agent, which would be the baking powder in it, okay? And I want us to look at the consistency of it. So that's what it looks like. We're going to add about a tablespoon of, or maybe about half a tablespoon first of baking powder, okay? Mm, I should have broken up those pieces, but anyway, let's hope that they go in. So we're going to add more time. And we also want to be careful that we don't add too much baking powder. But if we look at it, you can see the bubbles kind of coming up. So I'm going to stir it one more time. Okay, so those are the bubbles, which means that the baking powder is being activated. And I think that I'm gonna add just another tablespoon, sorry, another half a teaspoon of baking powder to this because I want these to be airy, like super airy and just nice and delicious. But I don't want it to have the baking powder taste. Don't mind the fact that this is white it's white because we're using fresh conch, okay? You can add some paprika if you want for color, but we ain't about that life today. Essentially, what you wanna do is you want to use a pan with much higher, um, with much higher walls, but this is the pan that I'm gonna be using because I'm gonna be doing smaller conch fritters and also because, I mean, I don't fry that often, so I'm not trying to dirty up my pots like that. And here's the thing that gets me. You need enough oil in the pan so that the dumplings that you put in will float while they're in the oil. So I don't want to halfway fill the pan to begin with because oil expands as it heats. And um, I also just want to be cognizant of the amount that I'm using because you can save the oil for later if necessary. So I'm going to take this up just a little bit more. As per the suggestions from my Instagram and Facebook friends who really, really came in clutch with the suggestions. So our oil is just about ready. If you look, there are little bubbles that are coming up. So we're gonna do a test, okay? And normally when we do a test, um, we just drop just a little bit of batter in to see what the oil is saying. So here we go. It definitely is. We'll know, yes, it is floating. That is a very good sign. If it starts to float, then that means that you quite possibly have the right buoyancy, the oil is at the right temperature. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for browning along the sides as we turn it. Okay? You want to allow it to come to a light brown kind of color. Look at the color on this, mm, yes. I'm gonna try to do this pretty quickly. And y'all please respect the ladies that make comforters um, at these little events that we go to. See this pitch in? No, 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 we ain't trying to do that. So this oil is super hot, I'm gonna take that oil down the kind of a resting heat and I'm gonna add more fritters so that the oil doesn't continue to get too hot.
so you continue turning them and I'm taking these little pieces out as well because I don't want these to get burnt and flavor my oil like burnt oil So this is the texture of the first Kung Fu See that? Okay. Oops. Ooh, child. child. Let me deal with this oil. So. I'm going to finish dropping these. And allowing them to fry. I'm also going to make just a little bit of um, Kung Fu the sauce, although it's really not my best, my best thing. Like I don't specialize in that. So I'm going to make some Kung Fu the sauce after I finish frying all of these. Ooh, child, these are some good for this boy. <laughs> I love that. We have our fritters here, they're done, and they're, they're cooling a little bit, okay? And the sign of a very good fritter is the fact that they don't need much. But we're going to make, at least I could try make one, one fritter um, sauce. So I'm gonna take some mayo, which happens to be my least favorite thing. I'm gonna put that, a little bit of ketchup. I know this for color. Y'all, I ain't gonna lie, don't, y'all please don't laugh at me too hard, okay? We got some relish. And now I have some Devania's Bahamian um, Gombe hot sauce. So we're going to throw this in here as well. This might be a lot. This, that's actually going to be very spicy. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. And now what's left of my mustard. I prefer Dijon mustard, not because I'm fancy, but even if I was fancy, mind your business, but some mustard in here. And essentially, that's what I understand a conch fritter sauce to be. Doesn't need any salt because all of these condiments have their own salt. And guess what? I make conch fritters. You can make conch fritters. Everybody could have your conch fritters. You see how many I got out of just this one cup of flour, literally one cup of flour. And I want us to just look, let's take a look at what the texture is like on the inside. Look at this. Mmm. Sauce is my least favorite thing, but wait. Okay, I'm gonna dip. Dip, dip, dip. It's a good day. Plenty conk, no bacon powder taste, lots of herbs, plenty spice. I mean, and it's just a nice fluffy spring back in your hand texture you. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, this 18. Let's say you get 20 good sized Kong fritters with my batter mixture. I wanna say thank you guys so much, especially my Instagram coconuts that came to the rescue in my Instagram stories when I put out the mayday about me and my horrible conch recipe. I appreciate y'all above no other. You guys make it so much easier. And if you wanna be part of the Coconut Kingdom, go and follow me on Instagram. If you enjoyed this recipe, check me out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload. Yes, yes, and yes. Hey, that's it. <laughs> So y'all wouldn't believe I didn't clean up, give away all the fritters, and forget to do my extra. But anyhow, 
Kev Lighten, you know that you are made of top-notch quality ingredients. So you can't let any and everybody dig up in your pot. Okay, <laughs> we finish now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>